Hello everyone, welcome to my balcony garden. I went shopping today. I went shopping today. I have bought many beautiful spring flowering bulbs. I am itching to plant them. It does look like a lot. I have bought a lot of bulbs. I have plans for everything I've bought. If they're not gonna be going onto the balcony, I'm gonna pot them into other pots and you know, give them to family or friends. What I also tend to, to do, so I, bul I grow bulbs every year on my balcony, spring flowering bulbs, and where I can, I save the bulbs, store them through their dormancy period over summer, and then replant them. The challenge with that, however, is that the vigor of bulbs tends to decrease over time. So when you buy new bulbs, I mean, I buy new bulbs every year, you're kind of guaranteed, or at least there's a much higher chance that you're gonna have really nice, healthy, beautiful blooms in spring if you buy them new. I have friends who are gardeners and for their clients, they will you know, plant bulbs into pots and every year discard the bulbs. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I just hate wasting plants. So my compromise is I plant the bulbs I've bought this year. I plant them in a more prominent or more prominent positions on my balcony. And the bulbs I've had from the previous year, they've survived their dormancy. I plant them in less prominent areas on my balcony. So what I mean by that is, for example, so for my living room is here, we can see the balcony here. So I'll plant all these new ones into pots here so you can see it directly, or I'll plant them into containers and I'll pop them on the little table there that we have on the balcony as well and you can see the flowering displays from the window. Less prominent means on the left hand side of my balcony you have to go out onto the balcony and then have a look. So I'll plant those bulbs from previous seasons all together so if they don't grow or if you know maybe they put out foliage and then no flowers are having a resting season or something like that it's not the end of the world. So let's get started. Oh my God, where am I gonna begin? So I thought we would do it by species. So I'm gonna start with the Narcissus, the daffodils. So I bought a mega pack um, of Narcissus. So we've got different varieties in there. They're gonna to grow to about 40 centimeters and I'm gonna be potting them into two separate pots. And I think I'm gonna be either mixing them with tulips. I thought also muscari would be nice. And again, before, actually I didn't mention this, but when you are buying bulbs, just make sure that they're looking nice and healthy. Give them a nice squeeze, even in the bags in the shops, so you're not getting bulbs that are duds and they're not gonna grow into anything. The next one I have, oops, is a Replete, it's called. Look at that, oh my God, it's gorgeous. I love that kind of apricot-y, orangey color, wow. What I tend to do, so they grow to about four centimeters, what I tend to do is, um, when, I f when I really love a flower, I just plant them on their own. So I think I might just plant these by themselves in a singular pot. Actually, I might put crocuses around them at the bottom. Who knows, we'll see, we'll see what happens when I start planting them. So that's replete there. And these ones, these are actually, to be honest, these are the ones I'm most excited about. This is called, these are called Cheerfulness, Narcissus Cheerfulness. They are, again, I think they're a dwarf variety, so 35 centimeters, not gonna grow too tall, but look at the frothiness. Oh my God, so beautiful. I've actually already planted them. Um, I have done uh, a video on how to, basically step-by-step -step guide to planting any kind of spring flowering bulbs. So, and I used these guys um, throughout the video. So yeah, I'll link it up above and you can check out if you're interested. So now let's move on to the tulips. I bought a jumbo bag, a tulip triumph mix. There are 60 in there. I've got some big plans for my large planter. I want my planter to be absolutely rammed full of bulbs. So I always plant uh, winter hardy bedding plants in the large plant on my balcony because I just, I can't be bothered, um, you know, growing other things at the moment. So I'm gonna fill them with tulips and then I want to have like a really um, simple planting design. I want to go for kind of whites and greens and then when spring comes, these bad boys are gonna pop up. And look at the colors, wow, wow. Verona, they are very similar to the cheerfulness, actually, the Narcissus cheerfulness. I could plant them together and just have like a creamy, frothy, beauty wonder, but I think they're a bit too similar. And um, they also grow to about 40 centimeters. Next ones are these Turkestanica tulips. Look at them. Oh, are they not just drama? They are uh, a dwarf variety again, 20 centimeters tall, and they're actually good for the pollinators. I'm going to be planting these alone in a pot because I just want to see them by themselves. 
Next we have, oh look at it, it's called Blue Wow. I think it's more purple than blue. Um, these are great as cut flowers. Blue Wow. Um, again, 40 centimeters. I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of the plants that I've bought, they're all kind of more or less the same height. I tend to do that, make sure that they're more or less the same. So when we're in pots, they're not going to be overcrowding each other. Mm, look at these. These are again dwarf varieties, 20 centimeters. This is so Balcon Salva mix, which means balcony magic mix. I just love the fieriness of them, the spikiness. Um, to be honest though, I like trying different varieties of tulips, but I just love that original classic form. I just find the elegance of, of a classic tulip. You can't really beat it. Having said that, like what is this? Look at the leaves. Old caption, I'm pretty sure that that means like Red Riding Hood. Oh, I'm just fascinated by these leaves. Look at it. These guys are 30 centimeters. So now I have fertilaries. I've got three fertilary bulbs actually. I am starting with the Fertilaria miliagris, which is this beautiful checkered um, sort of nodding head fertilary. And it does emerge, well it says it emerges, you know, March, April. It does actually go into May. I see, I've seen a lot of them in May. I love the thin leaves as well. And just when they, when they blow in the wind, it's really something special. This one. I grew this last year on the balcony and it's just, you can't, it, it's really hard to explain how stunning this flower is when you, you have to be there, you have to see it, it, does, it doesn't look real. I think like, how, like, what is that? How did nature come up with that? There's another one I think called Orange Emperor, Orange Blossom or something like that, that's also beautiful. But this one is good for me, 80 centimeters, it's fine, I, I actually sewed it into quite a small pot last year and it was just stunning. And then the last fertility is, just look at it, Persica. Oh my God, it's just unbelievable. Cannot wait, it's my first time growing these ones. So now I've got some Old Faithfuls Muscari. I grow Muscari every year. They're just absolutely gorgeous. The bees love them. This variety is Night Eyes. So I'll probably mix them together with some um, hyacinths. I did that last year and it was really, really beautiful. Got classic crocuses, got a bag of about 15 there. I'm gonna pop them in just randomly wherever I like. My hyacinths, the fragrance is to die for. Cannot wait, cannot, cannot, cannot wait. And then this last group of bulbs here are a variety of species. I've grown them on the balcony for a few years now, but I have all, normally just a few of them or maybe just one pot of each. Um, they're a little bit special. So I've got snowdrops here, the variety is Voronovii <laughs> or Voronovii if you're you know from Germany or whatever really pretty they grow to about 10 centimeters I normally grow them alone also alone in pots but I might mix them together with crocuses this year I have my Scylla bulbs I love them I didn't grow them last year this is variety Siberica this is this classic um, variety that people tend to grow I've also got ranunculus um, bulbs. So I actually sowed some last year. They were duds though, nothing came of them, which I was really upset about. So once all the bulbs I've shown you, you know, they kind of last until maybe end of April. By the time those bulbs are sort of fading, the ranunculus should be starting to grow. They, they start to flower apparently the fifth to the seventh month. So that is May until July. Let's have a look as do these anemones here. So I will be sowing them as well. They have more or less the same um, sowing requirements and kind of characteristics and lifespan as the ranunculus. So I might mix them together and see what happens. I've never grown these before. Fingers crossed they work. So that was my bulb haul. I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe it gave you some ideas or maybe it inspired you to buy some of these bulbs as well. I'm going to be documenting all of them, how they grow, what they look like in spring, keep an eye out for that. I normally do a spring balcony tour when all the bulbs are flowering and it's just like heaven on earth. I hope you're all staying super safe and well and I send you all my good wishes and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.